Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, CB Insights, for inviting us to come here and present my emotion to you. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the future of human interaction. And what you can see up here is actually our technology showcasing how you can paint in thin air with just using your fingers. Um, this is done with Apple's AR kit and just our technology running on a mobile phone. So, Man Emotion, we are actually in the business of understanding and predicting human intent. And what I mean with that is that we're actually trying to combine different sensing technologies. And looking back in time, you can see that the keyboard was introduced in the 40s. We call that one dimension, but the mouse came in the 60s with two dimensions. And the multi-touch display came in 2007, completely changed the whole smartphone market, uh, replacing the keyboard. And we call that 2D plus because they're, they're trying to go into swipe and they're trying to go into force touch. But we believe in the future, gestures will play a really, really important role. And we talk about activate by vision, control by motion. And what you see today is just using the mobile phone as a magical binocular, exploring new digital worlds that you can have as an overlay. But exploring those worlds and looking at them is the first step. And that means that you can position things and you can see them. But the more imp interesting part is actually when you can start to interact with that environment. So in the next step, you will see that we'll, we will go into glasses or even lenses in the future. And how do you interact when the touch screen will go away? So this is a big problem. Uh, why hasn't this been solved before? Well, to track the hand itself is an extremely difficult thing to do. You need to track about 2 million movements in real time. The hand itself has 27 bones, but it also has 27 degrees of freedom. And that makes it extremely difficult to track, especially if you're going to use a mobile device to track it with limited memory capacity, limited CPU usage, and ultimately draining the battery. The uniqueness of our solution is that it's a software solution, so it scales very well. It's also very precise, and it's also extremely efficient. And my two co-founders, Hai Boli and uh, Dr. Sherus Yousefi, they started to, to do research on this technology seven years ago. And after five years, they came up with a revolutionary new way of applying this technology in computer vision. So they filed a patent for this. So I've been involved in the company the last three years. So what's happening in the market today is that you can see every of the big companies are launching their own AR platforms. You have Google launching AR Core, you have Apple launching AR Kit, you have Facebook la launching AR Studio, you have actually, um, not WeChat, but QQ are launching their own QAR platform. And Snapchat has a lot of different features going into the augmented reality world. And what all of them have betted on is the same technology as we have been betting on, actually using existing technology, using existing mobile devices. So the first step when they have introduced positional tracking in this, next step is gonna be using uh, interacting with your, with your hands. And the market is expected to grow substantially from 900, billion, 900 million units next year to 3 billion units in 2021 of AR-capable phones. And also the gaming sector is the, the fastest growing one from 89 million to 8.9 billion. So in essence, what we provide is actually a developer toolkit. We provide uh, something that, uh, a toolbox uh, SDK solution for developers to implement gesture technology in anything from automotive sector up until AR, VR, or IoT, uh, or consumer electronics. And in this short video clip that I'm going to show is showcasing our technology and why it's important. And I'm starting off with this screen because this shows, in essence, what the problem is today. If you try any AR application today, you will see that the digital objects will be placed on top of your hand, but we can provide them to be beneath your hand so you actually can interact with them. If they're only placed on top of your hand, it completely destroys the experience. So this is showcasing our technology out in broad daylight. And uh, you can see that we're switching over this into a VR setting. Uh, and then this is using in a, on a Samsung Gear VR. And here you can see the uniqueness of actually using our depth sensing technology to understand depth in real time. I need to switch to the next slide. Our business model, we license our software. 
with uh, uh, two funnels, both on the self-service side and then on the custom service side for big enterprises and OEMs. And we have a freemium model for smaller uh, companies. We have more than 1,200 developers and companies signed up today, and we have more than 20 NDAs with large tier one OEMs. This is the team today. We are 14 different people on the team with 10 different nationalities. My co-founders, uh, Dr. Sherry Cisefi and I believe were the ones that actually invented the technology from the beginning. So we are here today also because we're raising money. We're raising $5 million in a pre-Series A round. And we want to see if any one of you are interested in joining us. Please come and talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Dan, thank you for the presentation. It was super cool to see this in action. You know, a lot of this is just vision that's out there and coming, and now you start seeing this happen, so I'm very heartened. Um, I guess maybe for me the question is user adoptability and, and, and commercialization to solve a real problem. So maybe fast forward the vision for me five years out. Where is your technology getting used? Who's using it? Who's finding the value out of it? Things of that nature. Um, Right now, we're actually mastering the, the gesture technology. But we believe in the future, you will combine the different, six, uh, different sensing technologies. So uh, in a car, for example, you can have the full windshield, but you activate different things with your eyes, but you control it with gestures. So that will actually shorten the interaction cycle. So it's both with eye tracking, but also with voice control. So what we want to provide is actually a platform that can understand and predict human intent, what you want to do, and make the interaction cycle shorter in any type of environment. And we're starting off with owning the AR space with, within the mobile space, because that's where our technology really shines, as it's very lightweight. Um, following up on, on that, actually. So it seems like it's a, it's a very cool technology, and it's solving uh, a very hard problem, uh, from what you're saying. Um, but there seems to be a lot of dependencies in terms of, in terms of adoption. So you talked about actually the, 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 the screen will go away, there will be glasses. Uh, today we license the core. Um, um, I'm, I might actually be, be more aggressive here and, and think actually it seems to be designed to be sold to Apple to augment their AR kit. That's, that's so I, I'm, I guess that what I'm saying is a very cool technology. Can you tell us a bit more about that? the real commercial value that you can deliver to today, yeah. considering all the dependencies you have. Absolutely. Uh, I can start off with telling you about our main competitors who are on the hardware side. Uh, and in those cases, you have a device the size of this, which is basically uh, hardware that costs $80 on average. And that needs to be distributed to the developer and in turn actually to the end user. And it's extremely heavy on the, on the processing side. Our technology is software, so it's easy to distribute and it scales very well. And the cost side of it is we're pricing it around you know, $1 down to 20 cents, depending on volume. So it's extremely price uh, uh, benefit for, from our technology. Can you talk just a little bit about the IP behind this? You mentioned there's some patent pending pieces under research and delve for several years, you know, how do you view sort of that beachhead and how does that compare with some of your, your competitors? Yeah, it's a really good question. Actually came back, uh, we were in an accelerator program in Hong Kong exploring China because out of the, the 1,400 developers that we have signed up or companies that have signed up, about 500 of them are coming from China. And that is uh, a little bit of an, uh, a worry from our side. It's a great opportunity, but also you need to be very aware. So, so we actually spent six months, our last six months, to really high, uh, strengthening the security and implementing a lot of different uh, things that actually make it very difficult to, to copy what we do when we actually know when we can shut down licenses if they're trying to exploit it in, in any way. But we have a couple of more patents that we want to file, but we're a little bit hesitant because filing the patent, you actually give away the information what you're doing and uh, that can, can hurt you, so it's a double-edged sword. Uh, but the patents that we have filed so far is going into local phase in China, Korea, Japan, Europe, and US. Okay. Thank you very much.